Welcome to the Providence Podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to stay connected, from small groups to prayer events to community service. So be sure to check out our website and maybe even sign up for our weekly newsletter. And please be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. The Providence Podcast is sponsored by the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, an international community of Catholic sisters with a mission to be witnesses of God's providence. We place our trust in God as we care for God's people. Now, let's get started with our scripture reading and go from there. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to God except through me. If you know me, then you also know God. From now on, you do know God and have seen God. Philip said to him, Master, show us God and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen God. How can you say, show us God? Do you not believe that I am in God, and God is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. God who dwells in me is doing God's works. Believe in me that I am in God and God is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lately, I've been thinking about belonging and spaces where people do and do not feel a sense of connection. I recently watched a video about third places, and I've been thinking about that ever since. Third places are where people gather beyond their homes and workplaces. Our homes are the first place, work is the second, and the third spaces are churches or breweries or coffee shops or fitness clubs, places where people gather for community and a wider connection. This is not a new concept, but conversations about third places have reemerged in the last few years, probably because we lost these kinds of places during the pandemic. Not only that, but I feel like our first and second places got kind of scrambled as many of us worked from home. Some of us still work from home, and some have not yet returned to our previous third places. Maybe these places don't exist anymore, or we don't feel ready to connect in groups, or we've changed, and the third places that used to fit just don't fit anymore. I still feel challenged by the shift in first, second, and third places. I work for my community, and so my workplace is also our convent. I don't live there, so it's not my first place exactly, but it's still our communal hub, so it's not purely a second place either. Also, I host a community ministry, 
And of course, I want that to be a third place for people, for everyone. (laughs) And in lots of ways, it's a third place for me too. But it's also my ministry and it's in my house. So that feels like a little bit of all three places together in my living room. And I don't even know how to define what kind of place the online group is. But it's a true and real community in a virtual space. A sense that lots of us struggle to feel a sense of belonging and to find a third place that fits. Even though we might feel safe enough to return to spaces with people, we may not have found a place that feels comfortable, or we might have a touch of social anxiety now, or we simply feel comfortable at home. I've noticed that lots of people don't find church to be a third place anymore. And no judgment about that, but I do wonder if that community has been replaced or if there's just a hole where a third place used to be. There have been lots of changes in my archdiocese, and that has disrupted people's tried, true, and trusted third places. I feel that sense of displacement and disconnection, too, and it feels like a loss. How do we reconfigure and reclaim our communal spaces? People need each other at the intimate level, as well as friendship, familial, and even acquaintance levels. In our post-pandemic world, how do we get our intimacy needs met? In our gospel reading for this Sunday, Jesus tells us that in God's house, there are many dwelling places. He assures his followers, including us, that he's preparing a place for us in this mansion of many rooms. In Christ, we each have a place of belonging. It's not just a random, unoccupied corner, but a place made intentionally for you, and for me, and for all of us. We're welcome there. I don't know if it's a first, second, or third place, Maybe all of that and more. And maybe Christ is referring to the afterlife. Probably he is. But I think he's also talking about right now, in this life, at this time. Within Christ and the beloved community he's established, we're all at home and we each belong. Personally, I find this very comforting I've sometimes struggled to feel a sense of belonging, and as I think back about times that I felt like I didn't fit in, I realize that some of those feelings didn't come from outside. I mean, sure, there may have been experiences of exclusion, but sometimes what caused my sense of not belonging was something within me, some insecurity or a lack of self-esteem or self-love. Brene Brown says, and she says this in a few places in some of her books and also her podcast, and I'll link that uh, in the show notes. And she says that if we don't do our inner work, if we don't find a place to belong to ourselves, we'll see everything as a confirmation that we don't belong. And I think there's something to that. As the youngest sister in my community, It's easy for me to feel different from everyone else and to think that I'm the only one who feels that way. Some years ago, though, we had an assembly, and at that assembly, we had a conversation about belonging, and other sisters shared how they sometimes struggle to feel like they belong, too. I don't think it's an issue with the community. We really do love and support each other. But there's something in some of us that just struggles to feel included. It was kind of a revelation to me to know that others struggle with belonging too. It was also an invitation to work on belonging to myself, loving and accepting myself. That can be very hard. And honestly, for me, I don't know if I can ever come to self-acceptance on my own. I need God to help me with that. I need God to remind me over and over that I belong to God, which God does remind me over and over. And I need to be reminded that because I belong to God always and forever, I can belong to myself. 
Once I trust my place in God and God's place in me, well, my belonging doesn't depend on other people, whether they accept me or not. I belong wherever I go. In God's house, there are many dwelling places, and each one of us has a place. And those are not individual places that keep us apart from each other. In God's kingdom, God's kingdom, we are all drawn together into the beloved community. I think there's an invitation here, too. We don't just arrive in this spiritual community space. We have to work for this sense of belonging. Not only doing our own personal work to feel connected, but also offering a space of belonging for other people. In our world, in our country, in our local neighborhoods, there is a lot of disenfranchisement going on. And it's not just happening at a feeling level, not just people's insecurity, but a real dynamic of privilege and lack of privilege that keeps people in or out of a circle of belonging. I think of racism, sexism, cis-sexism, anti-immigrant bigotry. I mean, really, all of the isms work to exclude people. In the kingdom of God, we need to work that out. Belonging looks like a circle, not a hierarchical line. We must work to bring about deeper inclusion. This gospel reading offers us a strong call. We're called to trust that we belong to God, that worthy or not, God loves us and always makes a place for us. When we trust our own belonging, we can be less insecure and more magnanimous We can see that God holds a special place for the vulnerable, that God is close to the brokenhearted, that God has a special love for the poor and tender people, and God calls us to love poor and tender people too. We not only trust that we have a place in God, but we work to make a place for others, especially when the world keeps trying to take away their place. When the world disenfranchises, we welcome. When the world offers only a few places at the table, we scoot over and pull up more chairs. When the world says there's not enough to go around, we know there's plenty, and so we offer a place of belonging for each of our neighbors. In God, there are many dwelling places. We dwell there together, and together we belong. Thanks be to God. And now let's continue our reflection and maybe even go a little deeper. Have you ever struggled to feel a sense of belonging? What was that like? And how did you work through it, if you did? How do you feel now? places that you have that help you feel connected to other people? What's that like, that feeling of connection? How is God present with you in those spaces?
In what ways is God calling you to help to prepare spaces of belonging for other people? What's God's invitation for you? And how can you respond? Maybe just take a little time with God and see what God has to say. See what wells up in your heart. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's Space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other. Peace.